This is ABC 15 Mornings. Good Thursday morning, everyone. Thanks for waking up with us. I'm Allison Rodriguez in for Kaylee and I'm Nick Saletti dealing with the coronavirus pandemic health professionals here in Arizona warning everybody. We are still facing a major shortage of tests plus help for hurting Americans. President Trump signing an economic relief bill, but lawmakers say this is just the first part of their stimulus packages and just like Iris warned us, Mother Nature really delivering viewers sharing these videos and photos of that rain coming down, making for a very very wet day yesterday and we might not be done yet. Right, the high country treated to a fresh round of snow. Meteorologist Iris Amrasio joining us now, letting us know what we can expect today. It was quite a sight, right? And we appreciate all of our viewers who sent in videos and photos to share at abc15.com. If you still have any that you haven't sent in, send them our way. You can always post them to our social media pages as well. Now we are tracking a few light showers through the Southeast Valley. It's not a lot of rain, but a few of those showers between about Apache Junction and Queen Valley slowly pushing to the east northeast. We also have a few more showers down southeast near Florence and southeast Pinal County and still some snow along the Magian Rim. Although it's not as widespread or as heavy as what we saw yesterday, it is impacting portions of State Route 89A and also portions of the I-17. Today we will continue to see scattered snow showers along the rim and for the valley there is a slight chance for rain that continues today, but it's nowhere near as high as the rain chance we saw yesterday and I think most of us will stay dry. We may just see a few pop up showers and that's why you're going to see a 10 to 20% chance for rain through the day, a 20% chance through the morning that drops to 10% through the afternoon and evening. And then th tonight I'm clearing out those rain chances and will be dry by Friday and through the weekend. Today will be much cooler too. We're going to start off with 40s in many spots across the valley with a high of just 64 today for Phoenix and a lot of low 60s for highs today. So grab those sweaters. You'll need them if you're stepping outside. We'll talk about when the 70s return in that seven day forecast. Iris, thank you. This morning, more than 9,400 confirmed coronavirus cases here in the U.S. The number of lives lost also on the rise. The death toll now at 150. In Arizona, we've had 29 confirmed cases, but a lot of that really depends on testing. And of course, the state health department admitting right now we still don't have enough of these tests for everybody. John Genovese is joining us right now. John, even the people getting tested are really frustrated about this entire process. Yeah, Nick, this has been a major point of confusion for the last few weeks as we've heard conflicting information from the White House health agencies, hospitals and doctors. And this morning, we're now learning that test kits from here in Arizona are being sent to California for analysis. Several local nurses telling us that those kits are being shipped on commercial airlines and not being rushed to labs. That is, of course, leading to delays, all as we've been told that Arizona State Lab can determine results in 24 hours. Some patients are now waiting seven to 10 days for their results. And the worry in all this is that those patients could be coming into contact with other people and spreading the virus without knowing the danger. I'm very concerned about the protocol here in Arizona because if we were infected with the COVID, that everybody we've touched is infected, including, I mean, I'm really concerned about the people over at the ER. It is very crucial to the healthcare system right now that we need these results and we need them immediately. Yet a nurse at Scottsdale Osborne tells us they are already running low on critical medical supplies, things like masks that they're having to use on patients who may not be positive for the virus, but are waiting to get their results back. Guys. Yeah, John, that's something that we have to think about the supplies that are needed to carry out those tests. Obviously very critical as well. We'll drive up test labs like this popping up all across the valley and we got an inside look at one of these mobile units. This pop up tent set up outside the Hatfield Medical Group in Gilbert. It's a primary care office but right now. They're only offering coronavirus testing for their patients only. Everyone driving up to the tents has already been screened by a doctor via telemedicine. They have a limited number of test kits available right now. As you know, there's enough hysteria around this, this coronavirus that everybody would just drive up anywhere and want to be tested. And so we have to really limit the and, and be, be smart about who we're, we're sending to get testing. Now, since Monday, Hatfield has tested a few dozen patients. We're told that the results, though, are still pending. 
Well, the coronavirus now reaching Capitol Hill, two members of Congress have tested positive. And with much of the nation shutting down now, the economy taking a big hit. ABC's Alex Prache is in Washington this morning where lawmakers and the Trump administration are taking unprecedented steps to help Americans recover. Of the thousands of U.S. patients with COVID-19, two are now members of Congress, Florida Congressman Mario Diaz-Balart and Utah Congressman Ben McAdams. The attending physician saying other members who made contact with the two are low risk. This comes as the Senate passed a relief bill Wednesday. Now lawmakers moving into phase three, finding ways to quickly put money in the hands of Americans. I, I view it as a, uh, in a sense, a wartime president. The president is pushing Congress to approve a massive trillion-dollar-plus economic recovery package. It could include $500 billion in direct payments to Americans, two rounds of checks sent out on April 6th and May 18th, $300 billion for small businesses, and a $50 billion bailout for the hard-hit airline industry. But any deal would have to be worked out with Democrats. And now the president is prepared to invoke the Defense Production Act, a Korean War era law, allowing the president to direct American industries to produce critically needed medical equipment and protective gear. We are all in this together and we'll come through together. It's the invisible enemy. Doctors are warning they expect to see a surge in cases over the next four to five days as more tests come back. But say critical protective gear is running low and putting them in danger. I've got my mask for today right here um, and I'm guarding it with my life because it could be my life. New York City's mayor saying the president's actions in coming far too right late. Now, uh, President Trump at this point is the Herbert Hoover of his generation. There's a massive national crisis going on and he is consistently late and, and very you know, marginal in what he does. Senator Mitch McConnell says Republicans will move at, quote, warp speed to craft that $1 trillion economic stimulus package, saying the deadline is this morning. Alex Perche, ABC News, Washington. Well, in efforts to stop the spread of the virus, some hotels and casinos across our state are closing their doors. And the ones who are staying open, they are now starting to lay off employees. The American Hotel and Lodging Association is predicting a 3.9 million job loss. We spoke with the union representing workers at several major Valley hotels. They say this could not have come at a worse time because this quarter alone is usually what keeps hotels and staff afloat for the rest of the year. They know how to survive in this economy, um, and so they work like crazy during this season so that they can get through the summer. And this is when we're making the money that's going to get us through the summer, but now people are using their um, paid time off to make up for hours now. So when summer comes, we're going to be even in a worse position. Now, one hotel manager sharing this glimmer of hope. Some of those conventions that have canceled have already rescheduled for next year. As local restaurants continue to try and adapt to these new restrictions because of the pandemic, the Arizona Restaurant Association is coming up with a big plan to help everyone. We are now going to unveil Arizona Takeout Week, just like we do our Arizona Restaurant Weeks, except it's going to be takeout. Yeah, I love this. The Restaurant yeah. Association telling us they're hoping to roll out the list of participating restaurants soon and members of the community are ready to show their support. Just because you can't sit and enjoy the, the ambiance at the restaurant, got to keep people in business. Local restaurants can register to participate. Just go to ArizonaRestaurantWeek.com. New visitor restrictions do begin today at Banner Hospital starting at 7 a.m. So in less than an hour now, the hospitals will no longer allow people to come visit patients. Now, there are two exceptions to that no visitor rule. Patients who are under 18 can have an adult with them and mothers going into labor can have one support person with them. Banner is strongly, strongly encouraging people to use phone calls and video chats now to stay in touch. While the spotlight remains on the coronavirus pandemic, we still have to worry about the flu as well. Well, health officials in Pima County now reporting their first pediatric death from the flu. The health department says this child was elementary school age and they want to remind everyone it is not too late to get that vaccine for influenza. Meantime, a bad crash involving multiple cars and semi trucks on the I-40 near Williams. DPS believes the icy road conditions were a factor. The Williams Fire Department says one of the truck drivers did have to be cut out from his vehicle. None of the injuries, thankfully, is life threatening. The interstate was closed for several hours yesterday, heading westbound, but finally reopened overnight. 
Let's get to a crime alert this morning. Chandler police are asking the public to help identify these three juveniles here. They were caught on surveillance cameras damaging eight cars in the Chandler Fashion Center parking lot back on March 13th. The trio caused more than $2,000 in damages. Police say they drove off in a 1960s Ford Mustang. Are you a parent or a teacher trying to come up with creative lessons for your kids or your students through a digital platform? Well, I have some ideas for you coming right up. Plus, the business of Brady. Demand for season tickets go through the roof for one NFL team. Just about 6.13 on this Thursday, Harvey Weinstein has been transferred from the hospital to a prison in New York as he begins to serve that 23-year sentence for rape and sex assault. The 68-year-old is in a maximum security facility near Buffalo. There are no new community spread coronavirus cases in Wuhan, China, where the virus was first reported. There have been 34 new cases and people arriving from other countries, but this is the first time no local coronavirus cases have been reported in Wuhan since the outbreak began in November. The rumors that former Patriots quarterback Tom Brady could be signing with the Tampa Bay Bucks is already leading to a huge spike in ticket sales. Tampa Bay previously ranked near the bottom when it comes to home attendance. Within hours of those rumors starting, fans flock to their website to get season tickets. We'll have to see where he's going. Yeah, right. Okay, let's take a look outside right now. Not a lot going on on the roads as far as traffic is concerned, but you may see this, those flashing lights on Country Club Road just off the Loop 202 as Chandler police are responding to a crash. No word on any injuries right now, Iris. And you can see that the roads are still wet in oh, that yeah. area. A lot yep. of low clouds, too. Still a chance for some showers. And in fact, this morning I've been tracking a little bit of rain through the Southeast Valley, through some of those areas, which is why the roads are glistening still. As I take you to Desert Doppler radar. We are watching several flood alerts too. We've got a flash flood warning that remains in effect for an area between Pine and Payson in the high country. This is impacting the East Verde River at East Verde Estates. That area reports a flash flooding last night and that flash flood alert remains in effect until 830 here this morning as flash flooding is still possible there. Avoid trying to drive through any low water crossings or any flooded roadways or wa washways or wa wa I should say we also have flood warnings for the Tonto Basin. Those remain in effect until one o'clock on Sunday. So several more days of that alert. Those low water crossings impassable. A new flood alert that I want to tell you about. This impacts the Salt River right here in the valley. That area under a flood warning through Thursday at 530. So th through today at 530 PM, SRP is releasing water that will flow down from Granite Reef Dam along the Salt River. So some low water areas there likely becoming inundated as they release some of that water. Now, as I show you on Desert Doppler radar, we have been watching some of those showers moving through the Southeast Valley. It's not widespread rain by any means. And as we go through today, all in all, rain chances are trending down with just a slight chance for showers in the valley, mainly this morning, isolated threat this afternoon. It's raining between Apache Junction and Queen Valley. We've got some rain southeast of Florence and Pinal County, and we're still watching some snow along the muggy on rim. It's not widespread, but scattered snow showers will still be possible through the day today, and that's what you're going to see here on Futurecast. Lingering snow showers going into this afternoon. For the valley, a very minimal chance for rain, but it's not a zero percent chance for rain. We've got a slight chance of maybe getting a pop up shower here as we go into the afternoon and evening as well. It's mainly our morning that we see those rain chances, but I'm going to keep those rain chances around even into this afternoon. Those winter weather alerts have been allowed to expire in northern Arizona in the high country, but snow showers because they're going to continue through the day know that travel could still be impacted. Those snow levels are low this morning. They'll be climbing through the day, but still be on the lookout for snow showers in the high country. An additional one to maybe two inches of snow still possible along spots along the monkey on rim today. Be extra cautious in the valley. If you need some fresh air and you need to get outside into your backyard, why not? We've got just a slight chance for rain, but you probably will need those sweaters. A high of just 64 this afternoon. Tomorrow, upper 60s though, and by this weekend, we're looking at highs in the 70s. Allison, I'm going to break down the seven day forecast further for you in just a few minutes. All right, we'll see you in a bit, Iris. Thanks. Colleges and universities across the country, they have moved to online classes or temporarily closed their campuses because of this virus. And some students are now wondering if their online courses which are now pass or fail will have the same integrity on their transcripts are saying that 
not only it does not have the same value, but they're concerned about being forced off campus. Uh, so students who uh, no longer have access to their work study jobs on campus. What does it mean for them? Those who've been forced to go home, particularly international students who might not be able to afford to come back, will they be getting financial assistance in this regard? The president of the Association of American Colleges and Universities saying many schools are asking alumni now to give money to create funds for emergency housing and food insecurity for students. Some schools are prorating room and board for the semester or students who've been forced off campus. The parents are having to find resources and lesson plans as some are becoming the teachers in their homes. The Tempe teaching duo is offering free lesson plans for teachers, parents, or anybody just looking to have some fun maybe and get through this whole process here. Carla Navarrete live in Phoenix this morning. Carla, learning doesn't have to stop. You're a mom. You've got three kids at home. So this is something that personally impacts you and your husband. Oh, definitely does. Uh, we've definitely changed things at home, getting all those classes done at home instead of the classroom. Now, Micah uh, Beverly and Nisi Westmoreland, they are with nerding.org, and they say they decided to venture off and do these online classes because they noticed that kids and teachers were having to move to digital platforms because of the COVID-19 situation. They say the lessons are not rocket science. They've actually uploaded a few of them to their website and all of the things that you need to put these lessons together can be found at home so you don't have to rush out to the store to buy any of the materials now they are even uh, broken up by age groups so they have for example the lesson that you're taking a look at now is the pair, paper airplane they have the lesson broken up for k through second grade and then third through sixth grade junk mail shoes coming up so save your junk mail don't take out your recycling yet um also we have an orangutan project um with some one of my favorite animals so i have some video resources for that and a project um, about building a model jungle school for your orphaned orangutans and again, Nisi is the one teaching the entire course, so it's very much an independent situation where you can pretty much sit your child, take a look at what she's doing, and then they mimic whatever lesson they are teaching. Now, they also say that if the remainder of the school year remains closed for kids, then they will also maybe uh, move on to online courses, not just lessons. So definitely a resource to have either for a teacher or a parent with kids at home. Again, that website is nerding.org and this couple is right here in Tempe. They say they say they want to do whatever they can to help the current situation. It's definitely neighbors helping neighbors. Reporting live in Phoenix, I'm Carla Navarrete, ABC 15, Arizona. All right, Carla, thank you. Well, we know that time apart from teachers and students, uh, that's a lot for them, I think. Yeah, and it yeah. can be tough, you know. Yeah. Uh, students miss their teachers. Sure. I'm sure teachers miss having that interaction. And some of the staff at Sunland Elementary in Phoenix, well, they're hoping to send messages of love to their students while schools are closed. Hello, Sunland. We miss you guys so much. Remember, everyone at Sunland loves you. We care about you. Make sure to keep those brains active. Make sure you're reading a book, doing some math. I can't wait to see you guys back at school. I love you and I miss you. And I'll see you soon. Yes. That's so sweet. Teachers, they really do it for the passion and they love the students so much. So you can check out the full video on the ABC 15 Facebook page and feel free to share. Might spread some joy. Much needed time. Yeah, we're so thankful for them. The, the teachers, the instructional aides, all the people who work at schools and they're just trying to get us through this. Ahead on ABC 15 this morning, I try not to get stressed out about work. New research into how damaging it can be for your heart. Why charge $40 for a bottle that costs like five something at at uh, Walmart. Well, you can't find what you need in stores, but you can find it online for a much higher price. What this man tells us as the Let Joe Know team confronts him for online gouging. Well, let's talk about that most accurate forecast after a soggy afternoon yesterday. We are still tracking a few showers out there, but they're very spotty showers. You're also going to see a lot of clouds. Those clouds still thick around the valley, and there's still a chance for more rain through the day. We've got a little bit of light rain moving from Apache Junction to Queen Valley over towards the east. A few showers southeast of Florence and some snow showers remaining along the Mugion Rim, although even along the rim, you're noticing that they're not too widespread. But as we go through today, scattered snow showers will still be possible along the rim and for 
the valley, we've got a 10 to 20% chance for rain. So a pop up shower can't rule it out, but all in all, we're going to begin drying out right now. 50 degrees hour temperature with mostly cloudy conditions. And today those clouds will break up. We'll see partly cloudy conditions by this afternoon with a high of 64. So it is going to be cooler today than even yesterday. So be prepared for that. A sweater as you step outside, maybe going for your morning walk. That 10 to 20% chance for rain continues through the afternoon. We're drying out tonight and then tomorrow upper 60s with partly cloudy skies, low 70s on Saturday, upper 70s on Sunday. And for now, just a slight chance for rain early next week. Okay, Iris, thank you. A new study this morning showing your mental health could have a greater impact on your whole body. Specifically when it comes to your heart health, researchers now linking burnout syndrome like extreme work related stress with AFib. While people may not even know they have it, it's still a very serious condition because the fact that you have an irregular, irregularly beating heart can increase your risk of developing a stroke. Well, a study found those with the highest rates of exhaustion had a 25% higher risk of getting AFib. Doctors believe the correlation could be from additional stress and inflammation in the body, but they say more research has to be done. Well, if you are feeling extra stress or anxiety because of the coronavirus, you're not alone, but the major late night hosts are still trying to make us all laugh, even though they are stuck at home as well. And this includes ABC's Jimmy Kimmel. My blood type right now is Disney positive or Disney Plus, whatever they call it. We've watched Frozen 2 more times than the animators who drew it have watched Frozen 2. I'm actually hiding in my office right now from my children. Yeah, I think you could tell he's talking quieter too, isn't he? He said, I don't want them to know I'm in here. You can see the rest of Kimmel's monologue on the Jimmy Kimmel Live YouTube channel or on their Facebook page. You know, you thought it, it's okay. It's okay to <laughs> yeah. feel that way, parents. We I need it. a break.